Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I would like to talk about Pluto in the ninth house for Sagittarius. So as always, I start with the house first, explain uh, what's the meaning of ninth house, and then I'll explain Pluto, and then we're gonna combine it together. So you know what it means having that uh, Pluto energy in your ninth house. I think I resonate with you guys a lot because I have my Sagittarius in the first house and I have a planet Uranus in it. So I have a lot of, you know, characteristic of Sagittarius and ninth house energy. So I can speak a lot from my own experience. So let's, let's talk about ninth house first. Um, let me give you like quick overview of first to eight so you know where we're coming from because each house is connected to every other houses on the the 12th house or the zodiac wheel and it always like they communicate with each other they support each other they don't just stand alone so from the first the seven or six house is all about your personal house, your perception, how you perceive the world, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive others or your family. And from seventh house, you're transitioning to how like others see you in a society. Now the role is reversed. And now we're looking at how others look at you, how they perceive you uh, from their point of view. So seven house, we talked about is relationship. Um, how you understand yourself in a relationship. Eighth house is like the deepest um, like empowerment journey, how we confront our limitation when we're in a relationship with others and how we can transform and expand ourselves. And ninth house, we're gonna take that one step further, which is now how you gonna relate to the culture or belief system or religion or like this bigger truth out there, how are you gonna relate yourself in that sort of context? So having Pluto there, like Pluto is the ruler of eighth house and Scorpio. So it has this, um, it comes with this, your unconscious attachment and the desires. So wherever your Pluto is, you know the intention of your soul's desire for this lifetime. So if you have Pluto in your ninth house, your soul's intention would be explore or expand its um, belief system and like, or transform your belief system through experiencing or learning a different culture, different belief system, or different philosophy in the world. So how it plays out in your world is basically when you, um, it might be your past life or early this life, you might have just adopted someone else's belief system. You never really um, explored your own, like what do you value? You might have just like, oh, my parents believe that, or my society, told me believe that so I'm just gonna accept it or even like early childhood you might have been forced to take on your uh, family's belief system so now this lifetime you your soul has strong desire to like let's explore for ourselves let's just not take what everyone else said to on ourselves let's find out for ourselves so you, have, you will have the strong desire to explore and experience a different culture, different background, different belief systems, and understand yourself in this biggest con um, context of like the vastness of the universe. And you also might like, you have this innate a uh, desire to like, you question everything when you're a child. Uh, you might like, I, I had that experience. I, I grew up Muslim and I questioned everything, but it was like a bad thing to question. You should just like believe it. But you, you will have this deep sixth sense that you just know when something doesn't make sense. 
And also the Scorpio energy constantly forces you to confront that limitation in your belief system. So whenever like, you easily discover all the limitations that exist, let's say your parents uh, teach you being Catholic or whatever they belief system they grow up and they force it upon you. And then you have this innate ability or sixth sense of like, oh, this and this doesn't make sense. Like, I don't want to believe that. And then in the, also the culture uh, or the, even like the scientific truths, whatever that is, you always find the limitation in it and it propels you to explore more and find like a better or more whole because you want to understand your existence in a holistic way you want the like the biggest truth you don't want to you don't want a relative truth because a lot of time religion like our culture or societal structure all have its limitation it's uh how do we say it like it's relative truth. It's not ultimate truth. So you always find yourself confronting those limitations. Like, oh, I thought this would make sense, but now I see the limitation. And you always attract yourself, those people who has a stronger belief system than you or more powerful than you to, they try to influence you. And it can happen two ways. You can either like, oh, what they say makes sense. Like, I'm going to learn from them because they're there to, like, reflect, mirror you back. Uh, Another thing is you might react, like, you might react uh, protecting yourself. Like, I don't want to believe what you said. I'm just going to argue with you. I'm going to defend my own belief system. So that is a two dynamic constantly happens in your life because you, our belief system really gives us that unconscious security or emotional security. So once your belief system confronted, you're confronted by limitations, you lose that sense of security and a groundness. So you guys can react to this couple different ways. You can either like, oh, I see the limitation. Let me explore more. Maybe I can find a bigger truth or more holistic truth that applies or includes different cultures, society, and religions, not just like relative truths. So you will explore more. And another uh, scenario you might uh, attach to that sense of security in your own belief system, you think you found the truth and you're going to stay on your ground and you will fight or argue with everybody else who is against your belief system. And funny enough, you're always gonna attract those kind of people who challenges your belief system because that's your soul's intention. So you're vibrating at the level like, hey, please come confront my limitation. And then you always attract people. It's like, um, just threatens your belief system and force you to rethink, continuously seek. and. You can be in the defensive mode, argumental mode, and you, you, you can be pretty good at like defending. You can easily find their loopholes, their weakness, and then you might attack it or you, you will defend your ground and try to stay in your safe zone. Or another case is, um, this, this is the optimal case actually, because you can seek forever. You might not, never find the ultimate truth because everybody lives in their own truth. Another case, you just stop seeking and then find like a grounded belief system. And then I don't want to accept anyone else's or I'm going to attack other people's belief system or I'm going to try to convert them to my belief system. So you guys end up becoming like a priest, missioner or it doesn't just relate to like Christianity. It could be any other, like, are you spiritual and you're trying to make everybody spiritual or are you atheist and trying to make everybody atheist or are you scientist mind and you think everything should be scientifically proven? Like 
whatever you believe in, you might try to convert others to your belief system. And the third reaction would be, you will accept that you all, always may find a limitation in your own belief system and you accept that and you also learn to respect everyone else's belief system, um, have a safe space for them or respect where they at their own evolutionary journey because ultimately we all going to the same location. Let's say we're all going to the top of the hill and there's like thousand ways to climb the mountain. I think there's a famous saying that. So your truth, you might be like going this way. Uh, you found a truth, it takes you straight and you might try to con uh, convince everybody. It's like, hey, my way is the right way. If we go straight, we would get there faster. But somebody might want to take this you know, detour, or somebody wants to take the back door, or like whatever that is. Uh, but they all lead to the same destination. So just be okay. So basically your uh, lesson here is to learn the polarity point of Gemini. Um, nine house polarity point is third house, which is ruled by Gemini. It's about like collecting information from different sources fact checking or even like respecting others belief system like agree to disagree so the third scenario would be the optimal scenario like because everyone is at their own evolutionary journey and you might be at the level that um you know, you're so close to the ultimate truth because you can have Pluto in a ninth house for a couple lifetimes. If you believe in incarnation, you're trying to learn this lesson a couple of lifetimes. So you might be at the level of your evolutionary journey. You're so close to the ultimate truth and you also explore truth in your other lifetimes and you might have adopted different belief system and there's nothing right or wrong because you're ultimately getting to the ultimate truth and everybody is, so you, you might get there faster because that's like Pluto uh, helps you like accelerate that evolutionary journey. So at the end, we need to respect everybody's journey, where they at, what they believe in. And also it, it is helpful if you go out there, you know, travel to different places, meet different people, speak different languages to see the different facet of the same truth because each of us can hold a piece of truth. And then when you meet every single like this different person or different culture and you put them together and you have the whole picture, so it's never about like somebody's truth is the ultimate truth and everyone else is wrong. So it's really important to respect because uh, I have my south node in the ninth house and the north node in the third. So that's something it took me, what, like 20 some years to learn because I always thought like my truth is the ultimate truth. Everyone else is wrong. Or I kind of look down at other people who doesn't share my truth. All right and so that dramatically changed for me now I understand I have compassion for everyone who's on their journey to find their own truths and wherever they at because ultimate truth doesn't serve you um, at certain point in your life it's like a school system we gotta go through elementary level of knowledge in high school and college before you get your PhD or master's degree. So you can't throw a master's degree knowledge at someone is in the middle school and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? So you guys might struggle <clears throat> a lot like fitting in. You might feel isolated. You might feel a loner. Like you might refuse to like interact with others when they don't seek for higher truths or they don't they're not interested in those philosophy or belief system like I don't give a crap I just want to 
you know, live my comfortable life. And then it frustrates you. Like, why can't I find someone that like shares? Is there something wrong with me seeking those uh, ultimate truths? Like, don't feel that. Just know that everyone at their own journey. So if you feel isolated or you feel alone in your own journey, just know that you you are not. Uh, it's just it's there to just help you evolve or propel. So you can either embrace this desire as um, like egoistic center, like your ego tries to get hold of this and your ego tries to convert others to your truth, but your spiritual, your soul, what it wants is really um, spread this like your soul wants to be in a relationship where you can learn from others and you can also teach to others you guys can be like great teachers so don't don't be at the top of like i know everything i got convert others so just be in the middle i can still learn from others who's more knowledgeable than me i can also teach others who's maybe still seeking to get to this level so that would be the optimal space for you guys. And let me know if it resonates. Leave a comment and also subscribe uh, if you like this content. I'll be talking about the Pluto in the 10th house next video, of course. And you guys have a great day.